back in the house of the Lord again. Well, so if you have your Bible with you, will you turn with me for one verse, please? The book of Proverbs in chapter 3. <clears throat> Last Sunday evening, when I was speaking, I was speaking on the precept verses and the promises. And as I said last Sunday evening, we'll finish it off this morning. So for those of you who weren't with us last Sunday evening, apologies, but I will give you a wee quick recap before we get into the word this morning. But Proverbs 3 and verse 6, please. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. That's he being the Lord. Hallelujah. He knows how to direct our paths. Praise Lord, in the lovely name of Jesus, we come before you once again this morning. And Lord, I just lift this word to you. I'm asking, O oh Lord, for a fresh anointing upon the word. Thank you already, Lord. My sister has already prayed for that. But Lord, I pray that there will be a double portion for speaker and hearer alike. And Lord, I pray we leave this place not just hearing the word from a man, but Lord, and hearing direct from heaven. And Lord, being blessed by the true word of God. Father, I pray you would move amongst us here this morning. Pray, Lord, you would go from, 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 from seat to seat, O oh God, from heart to heart in this place, because, Lord, there are those of your people here this morning who need and long and desire, more than anything else, a fresh touch from you. So, Lord, I pray that we take your promises. You tell us that in your word that your, your promises are, are forever, that are at your right hand and forevermore. We pray, O oh God, that we would do some of those promises this morning. In Jesus' lovely name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm starting to heal up already. Hallelujah. I hope that's the anointing. <laughs> Glory to God. No, they're saying that's not. It's the weight. But anyway, that's our time. Last Sunday evening, my title was simply this, that every action causes a reaction. And that is so very true. What we do here, good or bad, will cause a reaction. Sometimes it happens straight away, and sometimes our, the reaction can happen and reverberate right down through eternity. In fact, I didn't know this uh, until a couple of days ago. This is called the action and reaction in physics. It's called Newton's uh, second law of motion. You've learned something this morning. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Every day is a school day, is it not? But never worry about that. Don't worry about what Newton had to say about these things. But as believers, folks, we believe that we are constantly moving forward in the Lord. If we're not moving forward, we're moving back. There's no standing still, there's no hanging around, so we need to be constantly moving forward. And I believe that our actions here will cause reactions throughout eternity. Why do I say that? If you're not born again here, you're lost for time and for eternity. If you're not saved here, if your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, if you're not redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, the reaction is this, that you're lost. But there's a hope, hallelujah. There's no need for anyone to be lost this morning because Jesus came and he died that we might be saved. It says on the other side of the wall, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Doesn't matter who you are, what color you are, what creed, what country, what language you speak in. If you call upon the Lord, he will answer. Hallelujah. Yes, and what I think is more wonderful than that, not only does he answer, but he says, I'll turn no one away. When we come to him, we say, Lord, will you save us? What's his answer to each of us? Of course I'll save you. Hallelujah. Let me give you a very, very quick recap for those who probably weren't with us last Sunday evening. You know, our verse this morning that we read, we looked at yesterday, uh, last Sunday evening, and it's simply this, that whenever, whenever we acknowledge the Lord, that's the precept, that's the, that's the biggie for us here on earth. Acknowledge the Lord. Acknowledge who He is. Who is He? He is Savior, hallelujah, healer, baptizer, coming king. He's creator of all things. He created the heavens, he created the earth, everything that we see with our eyes, the things that we don't see with our eyes, he created all those things. And when we acknowledge him as Lord, when we say, you are my God, you are my Lord, like the psalmist would have said, over and over, thou art my God, hallelujah. His reaction, this is where his promises come in. He directs our paths. For that, folks, that's wonderful. 
Now I know that we're on the path, we're on the narrow road which, which leads to life, glory to God. But there are many little turnoffs of that. And we can get it wrong, we can go down the wrong way when we lead ourselves. But when the Lord leads us, when we acknowledge him in all things, oh hallelujah, it's not just some things, all things, he directs our path. The second thing we looked at last Sunday evening was the, another verse of our great precept. Delight ourselves in the Lord. Folks, we need to learn again to delight ourselves in the Lord. I mean, like we should be the happiest, most thrilled people that anyone should ever meet because we're saved. Sad thing is, you know, and I'm guilty of it, we can be the most boring of all people. We really should be the most thrilling people that anyone could be, the most animated, the most covered. And I remember a dear old saint said to me, you know, Tom, she says, you're a black and white man. I went, yes, I am indeed. She said, but you know what I want for you? I want the Holy Ghost to call you in. That would all do me. That sounds good. Not to be colourful for the sake of being colourful, but to, to show all that there's Christ within you. But delight yourself in the Lord. Do you sing to the Lord in, the, in your home? Do you sing to the Lord it was just deep within your soul? Even your lips might not be moving, but there's a song of joy in your heart. When you read the scriptures and you see what Christ has done for you, is there not that, oh, bubbling up within your spirit? And you want to thank him? And you want to stop for a moment and say, Lord, I want to delight myself in you. Do you tell others about the great and wonderful things he's done for you? Do you get excited about when you hear his name? Does it grieve you? Whatever you heard, as we heard this one, where people just trail his beautiful name through the muck and the mire. It's nothing more than a swear word. But when you hear his name, it's like, honey, to your lips, is it not the lovely name of Jesus? Delight yourselves in the Lord. There's the precept. That's the action that we should be taking. And this is the Lord's reaction. This is the promise. Woo! He will. Oh, I love that. He will. Yes. We need to speak that to He will. Hallelujah. Give us the desires of our heart. My goodness. Folks, what's your desire this morning? I'll tell you my desire. I shared it with you last week. I want to see my family see it. Every single one of them. Even the ones I don't like. Let's be honest, we've all got family members like good old old friend, but all I forget. But let's be truthful. He needs to be on your prayer list again. They want to see them all see it. I want to see revival come. I want to see revival hit this city like a meteor. Boom! And it shake the whole place to the very core. Where people on the Falls Road and the Shankle Road will be sitting beside one another, standing together with their hands raised, singing glory to God. Can he do it? Of course he can do it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, folks, but he gives us the desires of our hearts. And we see, my desire is, Lord, take us deeper. As an assembly, as a church here, take us deeper, Lord. May we see you all the more. Every time we meet, oh God, pull back the curtain of heaven. And show us the Lord Jesus. Thirdly, obedience. There's our precept again. And here's the verse of scripture. Isaiah 1 and verse 19. The prophet says, if. And it's always that little word if. If you be obedient. Because he's not saying you must be obedient. There's a, the choice is yours. You can be the most rebellious, carnal Christian all your life. There's no promises for you, no blessing for you. Yes, you make it into heaven and all that, but well, who wants to live like that? Half beat, look warm, wishy washy, sit in the fence, middle of the road, splashing both sides, no backbone, all the rest of it. What a standard for the Lord, do we not? Hallelujah. If you be willing to be obedient, that's the precept. Here's the promise you shall eat of the good of the land. That doesn't mean to say you're going to have all the food that you need or anything like that. You will have the good things of God. Hallelujah. In every single way. As all these blessings come, and there was three that we never got a chance to look at last Sunday evening, and this morning with the help of the Lord, I wanted to look at them. But those were the first three that we looked at last Sunday night. And if that got, your, if that got you excited, I hope it did. It's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. You can watch it all over again. But here's another precept of a promise this morning for you. Matthew 6 and verse 33. Seek. That's our precept. God's telling us. The Holy Spirit is telling us. Seek. 
Seek what? Seek his face. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What does what the Lord Jesus say in Matthew 6 and 33? But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Before we seek anything else or anyone else, we're supposed to seek Christ and the kingdom of God. And yes, this is a salvation verse. Of course it is. We need to seek him out. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. But folks, as believers, we constantly must be seeking his kingdom. We, we must constantly be looking heavenward. We must constantly have him as our focus. He should be the, we know that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He should be our desire at all times. No matter what we're going through, no matter how rotten you might feel within yourself, no matter how tired, no matter how unfeeling, or all, we go through all of those phases in our life. Of course we do. But we should constantly seek the Lord. Look heavenward. Keep our attention upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep focused on him. Keep focused on his word, his will, and his ways. Seek him in prayer. Constantly. Our cry should be unto him. Abba Father. Because he is our Father. And when we come, we have higher hopes. Because when we come to him, folks, as I've already said, he sends us away with all the, the blessings and all of the things that we need. Remember Psalm 27 and verse 8. When it says, when thou said unto me, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. When was the last time the Lord, when the Holy Spirit said to you, seek in my face? And he spoke to you this morning again and said, seek in my face. But he spoke to you yesterday. I says, time, time to stop, turn the TV off, set the phone down for a while, get rid of the iPod, get rid of all of those daft things that hold us back, and take time alone with him. Folks, listen, we're all guilty of it. We can sit and we can watch the East End. There's only bus, but we won't lift our Bibles up. We can sit in the evening and do four and five hours of Netflix, but when we fall asleep after 20 minutes of the scriptures, what's wrong with us? The devil is lulling us to sleep and stealing away this precept because we're not interested in seeking God anymore for anything. We rack up at church. Did you seek him this morning for the meeting here? Did you pray yesterday and say, Lord, will you move in your day tomorrow within our assembly and within all other assemblies that are true to the blood and to the book? If you didn't, I trust the Holy Spirit will speak to you this morning. Seek in my face. Lord, thy face I will seek. Like Abraham, we look for another great city whose builder and maker is God. We need to seek the Lord in all Prayer. What do I mean by that? Your prayers, prayer. All prayer. I mean everything. Everything. Seek the Lord. Thank Him for what He has done for you. Thank Him for the things that He has given you. Thank Him for what He has done. What He's doing. And glory to God. What He is going to do. Seek the Lord and more. Praise and worship. I can remember years ago. Uh, there used to everybody just talk about soaking. And then we all got fed up with that word. We all thought, no, it's been ruined. Folks, there's nothing I love more than soaking in praise and worship unto the Lord. How do we do it? Just not clear your mind. Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Get the music on. I'm not talking about Queen or Genesis like Bahabam. I mean good stuff. Get the real stuff going. Get rid of the rock and roll and get the praise and worship going. Because it speaks to your heart, does it not? Something bubbles up within you. And they get excited as you begin to seek God's face in praise and worship. I've seen it so very often. And please forgive me for, for speaking about ourselves. When you're at home, when we put on something in the house, or put on one of the old records, or, or someone singing the old hymns from many years ago, and two or three hymns in, and sure the tears are running down your face, because you're so thankful to God for what he has done. You know, this morning I sat on the edge of my bed, and before I, I was getting myself together to come to church, and in the background, sitting on the phone beside me, was that wonderful old hymn, All the way my Saviour leads me. What, my, what, was I, what was my heart beside? Oh, hallelujah. Folks, when you think about that, he's led us all the way. All the way thus far. And folks, he's going to lead us the whole way home. Yeah. Glory to God. Seek him in our praise and worship. Seek the Lord in the preaching of the great gospel. 
Folks, if we're preaching anything other than the true gospel, some of these are getting us and put us out over that gate on the other side of the road. We should be seeking them. Seeking them for the word. And you guys as well. Those of you are sitting there going, I'm not really a preacher. I'm not called to that. You should still be seeking God for a word. Lord, what's the word you have for me today? What's the word? Can you remember when we used to be like that as well in church a number of years ago? What's the word today? Folks, we need to get back to that as well too. Is there a word in the house? Is there a shout of hallelujah in the camp? I believe there is. Glory to God. We need to seek him in all these things. You know, seeking God is much more than just an action, folks. It's an attitude. When you wake in the morning, it should be the first thing upon your mind. And the last thing in the evening is the last thing you should be thinking about. You desire him more than anything else. You should desire his presence more than anyone else's presence. You should look for his, his word, the great wisdom and the comfort of his word. You know, whenever when you think back, whenever you were dating, when it was just boyfriend and girlfriend, you couldn't wait to be with one another. She couldn't. That's what you thought about the whole day. And then when you got together, it was, oh, here we are. Folks, we should be in love with the Lord like that. We should be thinking about him and, oh, Lord, just for those moments that we can spend alone, creeping away, hallelujah, along with the Lord Jesus. You know, there's that, that wonderful wee song. It's a, an old spiritual, stealing away with Jesus. You ever steal away with the Lord? Spend time with him, just you and the Lord, and listen to what he has to say? Hallelujah. There's fullness of joy there when we seek his face, when we spend time in his wonderful presence. We long to know God's manifest, conscious, wonderful, beautiful presence to be a constant experience from the, from the sunset, from sunrise, should I say, to sunset. To experience his beauty, to hear him call our name. And that's our desire, our precept, Lord. Help us to seek you. And what I think is wonderful, the Holy Spirit will help us to seek his face. Where's the promise? What's the promise? Is that not promise enough? The, as it were, the seeking after. But here's the promise, folks. And all, oh, hallelujah, here's that word again. All these things shall be added on to you. What do you need this morning? Seek the Lord and ask him. Hallelujah. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added on to you. You will never go away empty-handed. Never. When you come to the Lord in prayer, has he ever sent you away and said, some other time? I'm too busy for you today. I'm busy over here with this family. I've got time for you. Never once. You know, uh, old Mueller said it uh, so very, very true. He says, the first time that God lets me down will be the very first. He never lets us down. Hallelujah. All these things are added on to you. And when scripture says, all things you can go into the Greek and the Hebrew or whatever it was translated from. And you'll find it means all things. Thanks Glory Lord. to God. Not just some things. All things. Praise Hallelujah. You, and always remember that Luke 1 and 37 is for God. Nothing shall be impossible. Another one for all things. Philippians 4 and verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And another all things for you. Mark 9 and 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So we'll take the promise. What's the next promise, folks? Taken. We will learn to take as well, too. And what do we need to take? Matthew 11 and verse 29 says this. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Take and learn. Two precepts. You know, the Pharisees, they spoke of the yoke of the law. Folks, what was it? The yoke of the law was a burden. Powerful burden. No one, no, no man outside of the Lord Jesus. And we know that he was the son of man and the son of God. He was the only one that could fulfill and keep the law. No one else could. We know that there's this yoke as well to an unequal yoke is a burden. The yoke of bondage is a burden. But Christ's yoke, it is light. Oh, hallelujah. He says, take my yoke. And what does that mean? You know, we, we, we're not farmers here, but we know that the yoke goes over the top of the two oxen or whatever's plowing in the field. It's the thing that goes over the top of their neck. But you know what it does? It weighs them down that they can only go one way. But what I think is wonderful, his yoke is light. It doesn't weigh us down. And we want to go the one way. Oh, hallelujah. 
That's enough to excite me about that, you know. Learn off me, he says. Learn from me. Be my disciple. Follow me. Walk in my ways. Be taught by me, the Lord Jesus said. I can remember years ago in, in Bible class in, in church in Carrick where we were taught that years ago in the time of the Lord that the, the disciples, because there was many people on right, many teachers that were going out at that time, but disciples of all the teachers, they wanted to get so close. They wanted the very dust from their master's shoes to fall upon their clothes. They wanted to get so close that the very smell of their teacher was upon their clothes. They wanted to be able to tell others that they'd spent time alone with so and so the teacher. So much more the Lord Jesus. Folks, we need to learn of him. I want the very dust of the Lord to be upon me. I want the sweet arrows of heaven to be upon me. Why? Because I've spent time with him. I want my face to shine like Moses. Because I've seen him face to face, folks. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, teach me. Teach me so many things, oh God. To be taught by the Savior. Who greater? To be taught by the, the Lord himself. I'm not putting down Bible colleges for a second. Thank God for them. But you can go to Bible college and you can learn so, so many things. And that's true. But there's nothing, and I mean this, nothing like being taught by the Holy Ghost. Nothing like being sat down and schooled by the third part of the triune God. And I'll say this, I'll say, I, I don't care, you can have letters after your name and letters in front of your name and you can have all of them, one of all of the universities. In fact, you can be at Queens and be a lecturer over there. You, with all of your letters and all your papers and all the rest, stand in front of a man who's full of the Holy Ghost. The man who's full of the Holy Ghost will bamboozle you with the word. Why? You might know the word. He knows the author. Oh, that's so much different. Glory to God. Folks, we hear the Savior say to us, Come all you that labor are heavy laden. The poor sinner is labor. And have we laden them up, laden down by sin and conviction, the yoke of bondage. And this is the great gospel call. Take my yoke and learn of me. That's the precept. And all is not lost because here's the promise. And ye shall find. What are you going to find? You're going to find perfect rest for your hearts. Perfect rest for your soul. Oh, hallelujah. That's why we in the evenings, we can put our heads on the pillow. And should the Lord take us during the night, should we not worry anymore? We're not facing an eternity lost. We're facing heaven and home. Oh, an eternity again. No longer are we under the wrath of God. No longer are we under condemnation. No longer facing judgment or the wrath to come. No longer facing hell or eternally lost or being separated from God. No longer do we have to face that place where it says weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. But oh, what are we facing? Heaven and home. Glory to God. You know, that's why when you get phone calls about dear old saints like Agnes Gould. And yes, you're sorry for the family. But you're rejoicing within your spirit for them. You stop for a moment. When I heard on Friday that she passed, I stopped for a moment and I prayed for the family. And then I looked to the heavens and I went, Oh, Agnes, to see what you're seeing right now. Amen. Oh, glory. And one day I will see. Amen. Hallelujah. But you know, I'm an awful selfish person. I don't want to go my own way. I want to go by the trump. I want us all to go together. And none be left behind. All of us together. And that's why our desire, our heart's desire is that we see our family saved. There's a very thought of leaving any of them behind. Breaks our hearts here. And I know that that old hymn that I used to listen to in my dad's car isn't theologically correct. We're not going to be searching heaven for them. They're not going to be there. We'll be taken up with the Lord Jesus. And him alone. But it's a very thought of leaving any behind. Promise, he says, you shall find. Rest, redeemed, and ransomed with his perfect, perfect peace. And if you're going through things today, and we all have yokes upon us, that the world places upon us, let me speak to your heart this morning. Romans 8 and verse 18. Paul speaking, says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the day that shall be revealed in us. Finally, folks, bring in all the tithes. Oh, no, no, I've got one wee point after this. Sorry, this one's going to be my final point. And then the Lord shall be another one. I'll go quick with this one. Bring in all your tithes. I'm not going to stand here and ask you to bring in more money. That's not me. 
the Lord provides for this house. He uses you guys as well too to do it, but the Lord provides for this house. Can a man rob God? We'll look at that some other time. But let's not hold back from the Lord. And you know, whenever Malachi was speaking, and the Lord was speaking through Malachi, it wasn't just financial tithes. It was their offerings. Not only just their offerings, it was speaking about everything, their time. Let's ditch the excuses and get back into the presence of the Lord. To see again and to, and to serve the Lord. Because, you know, there's a wonderful promise here as well, too, when we bring in all the tithes. And myself and Billy pray it often within this place. This is what it is. Malachi 3 and verse 10. Bring you all, in all the tithes. Bring your time, folks. Bring your money as well. Bring your giftings into this place. Into the storehouse. That there may be meat in mine house. And prove me. Now I herewith saith the Lord of hosts. And here's the promises. And I will not open. If I will not open the windows of heaven. And pour out the oil of blessing. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. When we sow in folks. It's not about us reaping back. It's about what he pours in. Sow in. And let him pour in. Finally. And this all close. We did the precept. Walking in his word. and his ways. And walking in his statutes. Keeping his ordinance. Standing upon the promises of God. Believing the word. And applying them time and time again in your life. Having the attitude folks of Christ has said it. That settles it. I believe it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Have that attitude in your, in your life. Not just cherry picking God's word for promises. Taking wee bits in and going, oh, I don't really like that. We'll not talk about that today. We'll, we'll look at this here. This is a wonderful little blessing. Let's not do that. Let's take it all together. Let's allow the Lord to rebuke us when we need to be rebuked. Let him reprove us when we need to be reproved. Let him challenge us when we need to be challenged. All of those things. Ezekiel verse 20, 11 verse 20 says this. That they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinance and do them. That's the precept. And here's the promise. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh Lord, that's what I want more than anything else. That we would be your people and you would be our God. Yeah. Not a false God, the one true God. The maker of heaven and earth. What a wonderful precept and a wonderful promise. Folks, let's learn again to keep his word, to keep his statutes, and allow him, hallelujah, to be the Lord of our lives. May God bless you this morning. Trust this word has been an encouragement to you, because even just putting it together it has really been an encouragement to me. Let's pray together, folks. Praise God's you, Lord. Lord. Yes. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have had again this morning to come into your house, to sing praises unto yourself, to pray, to gather around the Lord's table to remember the Saviour until he comes again. And Lord, we know it's one last time here, on, on, on our one more time here on earth, and one last time in the calendar of heaven. Lord, we look forward to that day whenever we will see him face to face, the one who saved us by his matchless grace. Lord, I pray you'll accept of our thanks here within this room this morning for all that you have done for our lives, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Lord, help us, O oh God, to walk in these precepts that we might know your promises. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, I pray that we would know each and every single one of these promises in our life and in the life of this assembly. But oh God, of the life of this little city of ours. Lord, we look around at the city that we are in. We love it. But Lord, it's damned and going to hell. And Lord, I pray that you'd give us opportunity after opportunity that we might be a witness, that we might make a difference in this day and in this generation. And that, oh God, that we would see revival come to this little land of ours again. Lord, I pray you're blessed upon every head here buried in this room, yes, and every home represented. Pray, Father, that they would know the blessings of heaven, each and every single one. Lord, help us, each of us, by your spirit, to walk in the precepts that we might know you, O oh God, and know you in the fullness. Hallelujah. So, Father, I pray your blessing upon what has been said here this morning. Yes, Lord. Pray, Lord, will bless your people. But, Lord, bring us back again with a greater hunger this evening to come around the word and come around that wonderful <coughs> gospel word. And I pray, dear God, that someone could be saved here tonight upstairs. Someone could be saved watching the line. We just ask, yes, Lord, that you would do what you will with your word in Jesus' lovely name. Now, Lord, we pray that you would part us with your blessing and go before us in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. 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 Amen.